Thanks for joining us again for another Science Fair Friday. This is Ashley, and this week we will be focusing on helping your students finalize their question. If you've been following along, which I hope you have been, you'll notice that we've spent almost a month just working on ideas before we move on to the planning portion of the Science Fair project. It's important to give your students the time to build a foundation of knowledge before they can develop a good idea. If students were given time to adequately brainstorm and research, they should be ready to finalize their question. Remember that there are two types of projects the students may choose from. Experimental with a question or engineering with a problem. While the process is similar, there are some major differences. Experimental projects start with a question that they can answer through the scientific method. Engineering projects start with a problem that can be solved by designing a solution and following the engineering process. Even though they differ, both types of projects can be done in your classroom because they have analogous parts. While experimental projects work on a question, engineering projects will work on their problem statement. Each step of the way is similar, down to collecting and analyzing data. That way, both types of students have something to work on in your classroom. One way to write a problem statement is by following the who, what, and why format. In this example, students wrote a program that emailed an alert to their if their garage door wasn't closed at night, which was determined by a sensor. Their problem statement could be, homeowners need garage door alerts because it will help keep their homes safe. This student constructed a jacket with turn signals. Her problem statement could be, cyclists need turning signals because it will help vehicles see them and prevent collisions. Regardless of if they are writing a problem statement or question, students should follow these five guidelines. Number one, it needs to be interesting to students. Don't rely on those cookie cutter projects you find online. The best projects are based on questions that spark the student's curiosity. Product testing, like determining which paper towel brand is the most absorbent, do follow the scientific method but they're rarely interesting and often overdone. Steer students away from these types of projects. Number two, they need to be possible to answer through experimentation or engineering. Sometimes students' ideas are too big. They need to choose something that's practical for them to discover. This includes choosing something that they can do within a budget. Number three, it needs to be safe to explore. Read through the rules and I'm going to link the rules down below in the description and ensure nobody is planning an unsafe experiment. The most common safety rule broken is that no mold or bacteria should be grown at home. Number four, it needs to be measurable. Students must collect data and be able to analyze it. Otherwise, how will they know if their hypothesis has been supported or their design goal met? In this example, what does best mean? Best is not measurable. You need to choose something like how many calories, uh, is it the most affordable, something that actually has a number attached to it in order to analyze it. Number five, it needs to be based on knowledge. The students must be experts on their topic in order to develop a good question or problem statement. That's why they did all that research at the very beginning. If students really want to take their project to the next level, their question or problem statement should be original, motivated by a why, and important. Projects that explore important and relevant topics are more likely to earn awards and advance to upper level fairs. This week would be a good time to assign students to come up with three possible project ideas. Before they start on the next step, these ideas should be approved by a parent and a teacher. Also, once their project is decided, you can assign them to complete their background essay. This is basically the introduction to their research plan and report, but it makes it easier and less overwhelming to assign it separately and at the beginning. 
It explains important background information about their project. It can be a basic five paragraph essay, or it can be done through a worksheet, whatever works best in your classroom. I'll link our instructions and rubric in the description below. So thanks for watching and next week we'll be moving on to the planning portion with the topic designing your experiment.